Tanzania was formed in 1964 when Tanganyika and Zanzibar were joined together. The political capital is Dodoma. The large economic center is Dar es Salaam. In the 19th century, the most famous geographers didn't believe the missionary Johann Rebmann when he talked about African eternal snow, one or two degrees below the equator. He had seen the roof of Africa and its snowy peak, the Kilimanjaro. The highest point around the crater at 5,895 meters is the Uhuru Peak. Rebman drew from the Swahili, Maasai, and Shaga languages to come up with the name Kilimanjaro. The name means unconquered mountain with eternal snow. The sacred altar of the spirits, as the pharaohs called it, overlooks a legendary valley. The Rift Valley stretches out to the north of the Indian Ocean. It serves as a dividing line between two civilizations. To the west are the Great Plains where millions of animals have been the inspiration for black African culture for centuries. To the east is the Muslim culture of the Arab invaders. At the border with Kenya, next to Lake Victoria, northern Tanzania is the area of the rift and the great national parks. Safaris often start in Arusha Park. The buffalo appreciate this land, close to the forest and the cultivated zones. Among the daily sights, the jumps of the black and white colobus, these protected monkeys that are indigenous to the area, find shelter in the African woods. The giraffes are never far away. At the end of the afternoon, they take advantage of the wonderful light of the Momela Lakes, which are sustained by underground expanses. There are pink flamingos and hippos. When disturbed, the flamingos all fly away at the same instant. Their number varies according to the quantity of algae and salt in the water. Ornithologist Leslie Brown searched for the nests of these mysterious birds for a long time. He took flying lessons and found that the flamingos nest not far from here, at Lake Natron. The flamingos live alongside the sacred ibis and the marabou. Here we are in the land of the Maasai giraffe. Their favorite meal is acacia leaves without the thorns. The giraffes eat in the morning and late in the afternoon. They live in the savannas where there is an abundance of bushes and trees and an altitude of between 1,000 and 2,000 meters. These are humid areas with umbrella acacias, gum trees, albizias, and clusters of cassis. On the road to Arusha, scenes of daily life in a village market. Arusha, 155,000 inhabitants, is a symbolic town, the only place in Tanzania where Bantu and Maasai live together. The reality, however, is more complex. There are 130 ethnic Bantu groups in Tanzania, starting with the Sukuma, then the Gogo, Nyamwezi, Shaga, and Haya. There are two main religions, Islam and Christianity, as well as animists. Swahili and English are the two official languages in the country. An important detail, they drive on the left side of the road, most of the time. Tanzania is one of the poorest countries in the world, but Arusha is an important economic center for the populations in the north. The markets overflow with food produce. At the start of the 20th century, Germany introduced European farming products in Tanzania like tea and tobacco. The main crops in the country are corn, manioc, and cotton. Arusha is teeming with small businesses. 
Everything is recycled to make furniture or brooms, to sell pirated cassettes. or make shoes out of old tires, which sell for almost nothing. Arusha is a historic city. It was here on February 5th, 1967, that Julius Nyerere, founding president of Tanzania, declared the principles of a kind of socialism known as Ujamaa, or community spirit. Ever since, Tanzania has known a political stability that is rare in Africa. Christians, Catholic or Anglican, still hold most of the main posts in the country, but Muslims enjoy an increasing influence. Thirty kilometers south of Arusha, the Tarangire National Park. A territory that consists of plains cut by valleys and two seasonal swamps in the south. The marabou come here to feed when the dry season arrives. In the dry season, there are huge concentrations of animals, which explains the interested presence of the vultures. Tarangire is also the land of impalas and baboons. The green monkey, or vervet, lives in the humid savannas. He really likes the neighboring swamps and rivers. Termite mounds function as walls or barriers for the underground tunnels where dozens of millions of termites live. Grand gazelles, they always live in groups to be better protected from predators. The mastor around here is the elephant. The African elephant is the largest land animal, three meters high at the shoulder. It weighs about five tons, and if it is alone, one can be sure it's a male. Quiet rules on the plains of Tarangire Park. Look, a warthog family. The ostrich can run as fast as 70 kilometers an hour, which puts it way behind the cheetah, the fastest animal on the planet. The cheetah hunts early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Its faithful companions are the vulture and the hyena. An elephant herd. It will consist of a maximum of 15 individuals, always led by the oldest female. Their territory is a few hundred square kilometers where they find the water and grass they need. The grand gazelles prefer the arid and semi-arid regions. They are always on the alert, wary of predators lions, leopards, panthers, hyenas, but not the warthogs. A flock of storks. There are less and less in Europe, but there are still thousands in Tanzania. They have a preference for the parks in the Rift Valley. In the northern part of Tarangire, the giant baobabs serve as nesting grounds for birds and bats. Their bark is often ripped off by elephants. Manyara, a lake in the Rift Valley, southwest of Arusha. The waters of the lake make up two-thirds of a national park with an altitude between 900 and 2,000 meters. Manyara is on Maasai territory. The Maasai, a proud people that came down from the Ethiopian plateaus, occupy northern Tanzania. <laughs> it is said that a Maasai is alone until his death. They are mostly indifferent to attempts at evangelization. A priest, Father Michael. My work in Motawanbu is to introduce the scriptures to those who have never heard of them before, in particular the Maasai, and also to keep the faith alive in those Christians that have been here for many years. We have a dispensary in the mission where we receive about 50 patients per day who, for the most part, have malaria. A Maasai village with its manyatas, huts made of dried dung. The women stay in the village to do household work. 
From the moment they become adolescents, their lives are devoted to serving the Moranes, the warriors. They are called indito, their skulls are shaved. I believe that the pride of the Maasai stems from their way of life. Warriors in the past and also nomads, now a people who have conserved their traditions and are close to nature. The coffee plantations in the Rift Valley, a true little English corner with the birds and the clusters of flowers. An old farm preserves the memory of the British colonists. Nancy, the manager of Gibbs Farm. Gibbs Farm, we have uh, about 100 people who work here at the farm, which involves all the coffee production, um, farm animals, which we use for food here uh, for the restaurant, and also a 10-acre acre vegetable garden. The production is about one-half ton of coffee per acre, and we have still three acres of coffee, which provide enough fresh coffee for the lodge to use all year long for the guests. This road named North Victoria is the grand classic of safaris. Those who love the stunning vistas won't mind the bumpy ride. At the end of the road, they will be rewarded with one of the most beautiful sights in the world. The Ngorongoro Crater. Nicknamed the eighth natural wonder of the world, it's part of the global heritage of humanity. The eruption of the volcano several million years ago has left a crater with a 20 kilometer diameter that is 600 meters deep. There are many marabous. 400 species of birds, most of them migratory, live on the Ngorongoro site. About 20,000 large mammals have chosen the crater as their shelter. Among them is the wildebeest, known for its spectacular migrations in June and November. In the swamps, tourists can see bathing hippos at any time of the day. A jackal. The crater is also a paradise for small predators and for warthogs. Crowned cranes. Zebras often mix in with the wildebeest, a good tactic in case of danger because wildebeest are slower than the zebras. Every year at the end of the rainy season between March and late May, 1.5 million wildebeest migrate towards Lake Victoria. They take the reverse route in November and return to their pastures. In the middle of the day, this lion is no threat to other animals. Lions hunt only at night or late in the evening. The hyena lives in the shadow of the lion. As a true carrion eater, it profits from the lion's hunt. Thompson gazelles are the favorite prey of lions and leopards, but also of hyenas, jackals, and wild dogs. These small gazelles, very playful and elegant, prefer the prairies with humid grazing lands. The largest part of the lion's day is spent resting. The animals are used to people in vehicles. A golden rule, it's forbidden to leave the trails in the parks, unless there is no choice.
the rhinoceros is still present at Ngorongoro. It's one of the rare places where they are approachable. The African rhinoceros normally has two horns, sometimes three. It supposedly likes the company of buffalo. Did you know that pink flamingos get their famous color from all the crustaceans they eat every day? Avocets eat them too, but their feathers remain black and white. Ngorongoro Park is not just wonderful because of its wild plants and animals. With what they know today, paleontologists consider the Rift Valley to be the birthplace of mankind. Homo habilis invented the tool in North Tanzania before it went on to become Homo erectus, even though at the time, the Earth's crust went through its most violent disruptions. Here in Olduvai in 1959, the father of African archaeology, Louis Liki, and his wife Mary, discovered the Zijanthrope, our ancestor of two million years ago, from the Australopithecus family. And he was a vegetarian diet. Homo habilis was both vegetarian diet and meat eater, carnivore. So he made small stone tools to skinning animals. Karibu Serengeti, welcome to Serengeti National Park one of the last places in the world where thousands of animals live in total freedom. Lions and their prey. And if one looks close, one can see scarabs that roll what is called a pill, destined for the nest. Scarabs play an essential role in keeping nature clean because they make excrements and carcasses disappear. It's almost dinner time for the hyena. A hippopotamus shows the tips of its ears. To protect themselves from the lions, the zebras sometimes seek the company of topis. And why not warthogs? It's time to go hunting. Lions hunt in groups. They try to encircle their victim by getting as close as possible. The game of hide and seek can last a long time. The females do almost all the work in the hunt. The males intervene to give the death blow only if necessary. In the Serengeti, one has the best chance of seeing leopards. Lions as well, of course, but there are more of them. Not far from the acacias, the giraffes live in herds. They form matriarchal families. The formation of the group depends on the moving adults. The females are more sedentary than the males. Near Seronera, a candelabra tree. A leopard looks for a place to rest, sheltered from the sun. These Maasai paintings bear witness to the long history of this people in Tanzania. The copies, emerging granite that indicates to the animals that there is water underground. 
a hyrax. Don't laugh, this very small mammal is the closest cousin of the elephant. Not to be confused with the mongoose. It lives in groups and moves its burrow regularly to termite mounds, anthills, fallen trees or rocks. They spend their time exploring the soil. So do warthogs. Serengeti means vast plain in the Maasai language. At the break of day, the park offers one of the most beautiful sights in the world. It's an ideal time for a balloon safari. Alan Root, a director of animal films, made the balloon safari popular in the 1960s. The balloon is silent. It's a unique way to see African wildlife during hunting time. Lovely flight this morning, very, very nice. Very gentle, very calm, nice and steerable down the river, out over the plains, just perfect. Oh, great, that was a wonderful It's a tradition. Balloon safaris end with a glass of chilled champagne in a toast to the day. You, um... I'll be along in a few minutes, so please help yourself. And then breakfast under the acacias. It was a wonderful flight. It was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Very well run. Couldn't uh, ask for a, a better experience for a, an African morning. A Nile crocodile lingers near a watering hole. There are many rivers in Lobo, in the north of the Serengeti. A meeting point for baboons. And for warthogs, of course. And impalas. And also a cheetah, a rare sight, with her young. The acacias, when in bloom, are covered with sweet-smelling flowers. There are about 50 kinds of acacias in eastern Africa. This is the whistler acacia and its ant nests. We now say goodbye to the giraffes and leave the Serengeti.